Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better than so Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the tap of dawn. Giving a microphone. Stress like a million bucks. Bucks and things in its cups. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Listening to me. Show sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Yeah, man. Boy, God has been good to me. Man, I can't really count it all. You can't either. You know, it's all in perspective. You really can't count all that God has done for you. If you look at every little thing, it's unbelievable the things He's done for us. How many times, you know, we, we got through something without even talking to him about it. He just he just blessed us with it. How, how many? You know, it's just it's it's so much that the fact that you wake up in the morning, the fact that you still have a place to stay, the fact that you know, may be struggling out here, but guess what? You you still going to work. You you know, you living check to check, but but you're making it all. You got all the plates spinning, you know. It's hard. You got a lot of plates spinning, but you keep them up there somehow. Every now and then, one break, but he put two more back up there that look a little bit better, and you got to get to spending them. So it all works. Um, and then you got a lot of people who uh, just can't seem to mentally put it together as to, uh, you know, why their life isn't in a position that they want it to be. We talk about this oftentimes, but I want to try another angle with you today. You know, maybe it's you. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's no external force that's at fault like you keep making the excuse to be. You know, so many people I hear, well, if this hadn't have done this, if he hadn't have done that, if she hadn't have done that, I would have been further along. I wasted all my time, my years with this man, and he did this, and I could have been here, and I could have been there. And this woman, she did this to me, and if she hadn't have done that, I could have been here and I could have been there. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's not really that external force that you keep making it out to be. See, I've done this to myself before. Once again, I'm talking to you about something I know about. I've done this to myself before. I've had the reason I wasn't where I wanted to be. I had it figured out as some external force. I had worked it out in my mind. Clearly, it wasn't me. Because if so-and-so or this hadn't happened and if they hadn't have done this, I would have been further along up the road. That's what I was saying. But hold on, hold on, man. Boy, I learned a valuable lesson, man. See, if you don't ever let it go, it's going to be hard for you to go. If you don't ever let it go, 
it's going to be hard for you to go. I was listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes one day, and I heard him say, you can't drive your car if you're going to keep looking in the rearview mirror. You go outside and try that. Try to drive your car, but keep your eye in the rearview mirror. All you looking at is where you've been. All you looking at in that rearview mirror is where you passed or should have passed, something you should have moved on from. All you're doing is looking in that rearview mirror at what happened back there. If you don't stop looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to crash your car over and over and over again. Or you got to slow it down so bad in order for you to keep looking in that rearview mirror. If you don't learn to let it go, it's going to be hard for you to go forward because you keep reviewing the past. The past is the past. And I know it's hard. Man, I watched a show and this lady said, well, I just can't ever forgive them for that. Well, guess what? Guess what? God may have already forgiven that person. That person may be extremely remorseful, could have gone to God and gotten forgiveness for it years ago. But you, you sit here and you keep hanging on to the back. I can't ever forgive that. Mm -mm. Then I heard Bishop Jakes come on the show one time and say something that really, really struck home. You keep drinking the poison waiting on your enemy to die. (laughs) He said that, I just shook my head and went, wow. You drinking the poison, waiting on your enemy to die. Revenge is poison to you. You know, if, if, if hatred is poison to you, unforgivingness, when you won't forgive a person, that person could be going on with their life made the right with God, don't know how you feeling, they skipping through life. Now, you make adjustments every time you see them, and it takes energy, man. It takes so much energy to hate. It takes so much energy not to forgive. To a, now they come in the room, you got to avoid them, stay over here. Um, oh, here they come now. You got to make a situation over here. They come into the house, it's family reunion. Uh Uh-oh, here they come. Where they going to be in the basement? I'm going up here on the third floor. I want to go out here and get some barbecue. She out there at the barbecue stand. Oh, Lord, I don't want no barbecue. I just eat this potato salad. People, man, take themselves all out of position trying to make adjustments when if you, it would simplify your life if you would let, just let it go. Maybe you ain't where you need to be because of them external forces altogether. Maybe you're not where you need to be because of you. Because you won't let it go. You won't move forward. Look at this, ladies. Let's say you've been in a situation with a man. For years, it didn't work out for whatever the reason. It just didn't work out. I got I got what you say he did. I got what he did. I got he, I, I, all of that, yada, yada, yada. When you get through, did not God get you through it? Did not he allow you to survive it? I got you got some cuts on you. I got you been a little bit bruised. But did he not get you through it? So now that he's freed you from it. Now he done went on. He got a whole nother family over there somewhere. He Now, now he trying to make it right. Because maybe he learned the mistake he made. And now he trying to be a better man. He just trying to get it right now. But you sitting there holding on to it. You drinking the poison, waiting on your enemy to die. So now instead of you enjoying the blessing of finally being free from a situation that was not healthy for you, you create an even more unhealthy situation in your mind by hating, by having revengeful thoughts, by hoping he fall on his face. Maybe you even doing something to the other situation to make sure they struggle. Oh man, you drinking the poison waiting on your enemy to die. Maybe you ain't where you ought to be in life, not because of your external forces, but maybe it's you. If you don't let it go, it's going to be hard for you to go. You can't keep driving your car looking in the rear view mirror. Come on, man. Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let me have it. Your undivided attention. I've decided I won't be doing this all the way through 2025, but it is my theme song. Try Jesus, <laughs> not me, because I throw hands. Try Jesus. Let's play it. Please don't try me, because I fight. Yeah. Welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I sent that song to a deacon that I know. I know a deacon really well. And we friends. We grew up together. He's a deacon. I sent him the song. And he said, uh, uh, Brother Steve, that's blasphemy, but that's using his name in vain. Mm. I said, hey, man, just just send it back to me. (laughs) Just just, just send the song back back to me, man. I ain't got no time for you. you. You know, man, I can't stand people that holy. I really can't, man. And I know he's listening to the show because he listens all the time. Because uh-huh. he corrects me all the time on the show of stuff I say. So Who I know he's this? listening. Uh, uh, I ain't got, I ain't got to say his one. name because he's, he's okay. kind of semi-popular in his city. You so. need me to holler at him, though? No, no, no. I'm hollering at him right now. Just send it. Just send the song back, though. <laughs> Where you holler at him, where I holler at him. No, 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 no. See, this is good. He see, a deacon. This is why the song was made. Just for yeah, this right here. Because yeah. right I there. throw hands. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see, damn sure throw hands. But, and he know me from back in the right. day. I know him from back in the day, which is what's surprising to me. Because <laughs> I know the, what God did to save this one. Okay. Right. Oh, Cisco one Kid was a friend of mine. He drank whiskey, poncho, <laughs> drank the damn wine. Now, all of a sudden, <laughs> he can't hear no song like that because that's blasphemy. So I said, dog, just send the song back. My bad. Just where I sent My it, bad. you send it right dog, back. Dog, just send it right back, dog. Hey, dog, let's act like this ain't happening. Since you <laughs> so. I don't care what he is, man. I sent that song to ministers, man. They holly. You sent it to bishops, ministers. I know exactly what Dog, Christians. I'm going to talk about dudes I know that's yeah. hollering, man. Yeah. Dog, Bishop Oldman say him and his wife almost wrecked their car laughing. <laughs> Because he got a sense of humor. Yeah, I sent it to Bishop Gettys down in North Carolina. He said, man, I love it. I got a great sense of humor. (laughs) Oh, my God, that's funny. I sent it to a dude just a doggone deacon. Mm -hmm. I don't appreciate music like this. It's blasphemy, man. Then he sent me a gospel song. Man, you right. Right. Man, Thank you, you so your nerve. Hey, I'm right. coming up. Hey, oh hey, God. hey. I'm going to send it back. Oh, my mule. <laughs> oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Steve. Forgot good, morning. To do good morning. No need for an intro. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy we Thursday. all feeling that. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I, I got a cousin just like she came a minister. Now, she came to one of my comedy shows. So I'm like, I just, you, I can do it. You cuss too much. But you cuss too. <laughs> That's what I don't get. You, That's where I you, learned it from. You <laughs> just got saved Friday. Yeah. Hey, don't come to Week my four show. Week four last, I remember we was cussing at Chick- each other. Yeah. <laughs> Here your ticket money back. I don't Man. <laughs> All right. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO. The Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey will be in the building. We'll get to it at 32 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're an employer, you know how challenging it can be to hire. But right now, you face even more challenges. Matson Resources could relate. They needed to hire a seasoned senior Citrix administrator to provide IT support. So they turned to ZipRecruiter, and that's how they found Peter Alcantar Jr. Peter was laid off during COVID-19 and needed to find another job quickly. So he posted his resume on ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter identified him as a great match for the role at Matson Resources, and they hired Peter in less than three weeks. See how ZipRecruiter can help you hire. Try it now for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash strawberry. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash strawberry. Time now for Ask the CLO. You ready, CLO? Always. All right, Clo. here we go. It's close, Shirley. It's close. We're going we to call it Clo. The clo- ask the okay, clo. Cool. Ask the clo. <laughs> All right, clo. Here we go, clo. This is from Malcolm in Tampa, Florida. He says, "I've been in a committed relationship for six years, and I work out with my woman." 
When we're at the gym, we often comment on other people's nice bodies. On Saturday, a new guy was in our gym. And on the way home, I told my girl that the new guy was really cut up. She commented, no, he was fine as F. <laughs> wow. You have said that. I was like, okay, so Malcolm says, I was like, hold on now. Wait a darn minute. Uh, I've been with her for six years, and she's always told me I have a great body, but she's never said I was fine as F. Uh, yeah. Now I'm all in my feelings, and I don't want this guy around my girl anymore. I need your advice. Claire. Uh, okay. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. What's his name? His name is Malcolm, Malcolm Steve. Well, Malcolm. In the middle. Malcolm, <laughs> let's uh, let's look at this. You said he was fine. Mm-hmm. She stopped you and said, "No, <laughs> he was fine it. as f." <laughs> yeah, wow. you know how fine that is. It though. threw you into something where I now do. you don't. <laughs> you all in your feelings now. You don't want him around your girl. He the new guy at the gym. Mm-hmm. He ain't around your girl. But now let's be careful, Malcolm. Because if mm. you don't want him around your girl, then you yeah, must why? be going to ask him not to come to the gym no more. Yeah. Mm. Now, based on the reaction that she had to his body, <laughs> sound like an ass woman just waiting to happen to me. <laughs> but obviously she was comfortable saying that. She, he said they comment on other people's bodies all the time. Yeah, she but very comfortable. and she has told him he's always had a great body, mm-hmm. but he's never said it was fine as that. Because it ain't. <laughs> See, your That's body ain't fine as F. That's why you in the gym, because you're trying to get to where he at. He yeah, done transferred, yet. He yeah, done yeah, transferred yeah. from another yeah. gym. It, it See, he been in. at another gym. He just came in here. He knew. Maybe you he ought knew. to find out what gym he was at and go join that one. Get his old trainer. All right. Uh, Bria and Gary says, uh, I'm a 28-year-old woman, and I'm engaged to a 29-year-old man that must think I'm stupid. A few weeks ago, he returned to work at a nearby factory, and he told me he had to be quarantined there because of COVID-19. He went to work on a Sunday and didn't come home till Thursday. During that time, he could only text. Truthfully, the cell phone service in the building is crappy, so I could believe that part. What I can't believe is that all these men slept on pallets on the floor for five nights. I don't know anyone who works with him that can validate this story. If I call his job, I'm sure he'd find out and be mad. Does this sound crazy to you? <laughs> no. It's a no. cold story, though. I no, like a good it's a, it's, getaway. It's a lot of, <laughs> lot of men have to go away for five days what? and can only text. No, That's right. That don't sound like, I'm, you know, <laughs> hey. You know, with our brothers. <laughs> It's, 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 men Bria. do that all the time. You know, go to their job and can't <laughs> leave. You know, I mean, you went down there Saturday and can't leave to Thursday. I know. I mean, you know, that's like, that happened all the time. You know, like, you know how many people down there at that McDonald's? Like, if you go down there on Thursday, Sunday, you can't come back home to Thursday. You are in there sleeping all on them floors and everything. You oh, know, it's God. hard. Come it's on, up on pallets, huh? Believe on that, pallets. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Tell her the yep. truth, Steve. How, how that sound? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> what company brings your ass to work and locks you in there? Yeah. No, sister, you way past mm-hmm. overtime. Overtime mm-hmm. is time and a half. Mm-hmm. Once you get in the X amount of hours, you in double time. You get in that, you triple time. You got to pay these people. Mm. He ain't Indiana. no fire man. Yeah. What's you know, Gary and Dad for some day. Yeah, huh? 24. What they do in Gary? What, what's the industry in Gary and Dad? Oh, it ain't nothing. It's it Michael Jackson steel. in them house. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't it used to be steel? <laughs> Curator of the Jackson home. 23 Jackson, Jackson Street. Gary, <laughs> Gary got some good people in it, though, man. Home of Big Daddy's Barbecue. Oh, yes, yeah. Sir. Shout out to Big yeah, Daddy. Sure mm-hmm. Big Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, though, you can go by there and see Michael in them house. <laughs> So it's a he either worked at Michael House or he worked for Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we don't know nothing about no factory he worked at. <laughs> Bria, that's crazy. <laughs> Trust your, your instincts, girl. All right, this is from Anonymous in Columbus, uh, Mississippi. I've been married to an amazing man for four years. We live in Mississippi, but he's from Texas. So we drive to visit his family every summer. Uh, We usually stay at his brother's house, but this year his sister asked us to stay with her. I love his sister, 
but I hate her house. She has an old mutt that is the love of her life. As soon as you walk in her house, a strong urine and Lysol smell hits you. We'll be in town for four days, and I can't stay at her house. My husband said he's not telling her, so I'll have to tell her. What should I say? <laughs> you can't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just say you forgot and go over there and stay at his brother's house. Because once you live in the house, you don't smell it no That's more. That's right. And you, you all is. got somebody's yeah. house that you go over that's got mm-hmm. a strange odor, but yes. they be sitting yeah. up in there like it's just regular. Come on oh, yeah. in. They, they ain't immune to it. They don't even smell that. Yeah. Yeah. You can't they don't, they don't go in nobody's head. Because once you say it smell, you can't do that. I was with a friend of mine. We went mm-hmm. over another friend's house. He took his daughter. And I walked in the brother's house, and I knew it had a little odor to it. The, the little girl walked in and said, this house smells like dogs. And the dude's <laughs> wife said, my house does not smell like a dog. And I was standing there next to the little girl like, yeah, nailed it. I, I was what with the little say? girl. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> it is a dog in there. You, you do know it's a dog in there. Yeah. So don't yeah. say anything and go stay at the brother's house. Thank yeah, you or stay okay. at a hotel. Yeah. Get a hotel, man. Be Can't right. stay at a house. And who got Lysol anyway? I know. <laughs> well, Where did she get now? that Ain't from? none left. No. <laughs> yeah, with COVID, yeah. All right, coming up, the nephew in the building with Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann will be here with national news. And in entertainment news, our forever first lady, the beautiful Michelle Obama, admits to dealing with a form of low-grade depression. We'll talk about that. And then Kevin Hart says he has a message for social media trolls. We'll talk about all these stories. But right Mm. now, it is time to run that prank back with the nephew. What you got for us, Neff? Hey, look at you. This right here is the (laughs) win with Butch. That's what this is. The, the name of it is the wedding with Butchie. You know, ain't, gonna, ain't finna be no wedding. The wedding with Butchie. Let's go. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm trying, to, uh, I'm trying to reach Alan. This is he. Hey, Alan, how you doing? This is Butchie, man. Butchie? Uh, yeah. You was, you was at the cookout the other day with the family. I'm, I'm Christian's cousin. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Y'all was at, you was at the, uh, at the cookout the other day. I wanted to reach out to you. I know the wedding is in the next uh, two weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. like two and a half, two and a half, yeah. Yeah, you you ready for that? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, man, I, I got a little bit of a problem that, uh, you know, that we kind of wanted to call you about, you know, because the family got together and had a little meeting, like, and what the deal is is this here. I know I know you're excited and want to marry my cousin, and, and she kind of excited, too, about the whole thing. But, you know, like, the family members, we got together and decided that uh, for right now, I mean, right now, we finna, like, we finna call the wedding off for right now. <laughs> what you talking about? What you talking about calling the wedding off? Well, see, you know, everybody think you're cool and all. And, uh, you know, we real, real passionate, man, about, you know, people marrying into our family or whatever. Like, you know, the, the gathering the other day, you know that was a, uh, a potluck thing. Everybody bring something, right? Hold on, Kristen ain't never told me no like that. About what? About something about not getting no marriage. Okay, well, see, right here, like I say, this is what the family done decided on. I don't give a what the family decided on. Okay, see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. See, we're a real close-knit family, and it's like this here. See, first of all, let me get you to understand this here. You're talking to Butchie right now, all right? See, here's the deal. You know, we done decided that the, the wedding ain't finna happen in two weeks. Until, like, when we had the, we had the potluck barbecue, everybody bring something. Why you ain't bring nothing? What you talking about? I'm paying for the wedding. Oh, 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 that's what you finna throw up in our face, that you paying for the wedding? Hell yeah. What the was I supposed to bring? Hey, man, everybody bring something when we have a potluck, you know? Everybody bring something and contribute to, to, to the function or the event that's going on, you know? And for you to walk up in there and not have nothing, that let us know what kind of person you gonna be in the family. We can't have it. Who is this again? This is Butchie right here. I don't know no Butchie. Look, I came to the family gathering picnic. I came there, showed up, loving on all y'all, telling y'all how great this was going to be. And now you telling me I can't marry Kristen? Is that what you telling me? Hey, man, the family done already voted. And when the family vote, dog, that's it. I ain't marrying the family. You marrying, our, you marrying my cousin Kristen. That's what you trying to do. And you ain't finna marry her. Look, don't be calling up to my job talking no 
like this. I'm already on hot from the day with some bull my supervisor done pulled. Do not come calling me with no bull Hey, man, let me tell you this here. Until we can decide that you good for Christian, until we can decide that, you know, you can handle being married to her and you come correct as a family member, and if you're going to come to potlucks, then you bring a pot. You ain't bring nothing. I ain't got to bring nothing. I'm paying for this wedding. I don't give a what y'all say. All that money I done dropped for this, I bought two bottles of wine to it. You bought, when you, when, I, I ain't seen no wine. I don't care if you got that wine or not. I saw her mama drinking it. Okay, well, I ain't getting no wine. I don't remember nobody bringing no wine. See, Butchie normally see everything that go on. I got class. I don't know what the you talking about. Butchie, whatever. I brought some wine. Her mama was drinking it, and I ain't playing that. This wedding going down. I done spent over $23,000 on this. Hey, man, I done already told you that the family done voted on that the wedding ain't. I don't give a what the family voted on. I done paid for this. I ain't heard nothing from Christian about this. Christian might not know what we done voted on. We make decisions sometimes for everybody. You understand? That don't include me. We'll let Christian know that we finna stop the wedding. We, I'm just calling to let you know before I even tell her what's up. You trying to tell me Christian don't even know? Nah, we ain't told her that we don't agree with you yet and that we gonna stop the wedding. We ain't told her that. Man, get the out of here. I done paid all this money for this, man. Y'all ain't stopping Hey, man, I done already told you what we doing, all right? I'm not finna continue to go back and forth with you. You better get off my phone raising your voice at me. I don't hey know man, who the hell you talking I tell you what, let me say this to you. I don't care if I got to bust up in that church and stop this wedding, because you done went against what we done said. Whatever I got to do. I don't know who you with. I wish your would try to stop this wedding. Look, we can handle this right now. I can get off of work. I'm already going through some bull, and I'm already on fire. I will come there and bust your Right now. I don't know, you know what, see, 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 see what she was going with Nigel? See, Nigel ain't act like this. Hey, oh, what, what the, I don't know you didn't bring that up. Me and that done already have, don't even bring that name up in me. Hey, man, hey, man, I'm just keeping it real with you. Nigel ain't act like this here. That, we done have words, and if that want to come and bust up in there, too, he get dealt with just like that, too. Hey, man, all I'm just trying to say is the whole family, 100%. All that, I don't want to hear nothing about this no more. Tell me where to be, and we can deal with this right now. I'm just letting you know the family done voted, the family done already voted. No now, what we'll do, we'll push the wedding back and, and then give us time to reevaluate you. Man, reevaluate me? I don't need no evaluation from y'all. Me and Chris are getting married, and I put some money on this. All I know is the wedding ain't happening. That the wedding is happening. Not after I done paid for all this. You want some bull? You? The family, we gonna get married in two and a half weeks, and y'all if y'all don't come, and if y'all come up in that, y'all gonna get dealt hey with man, straight I'm up. Not, I'm, I'm trying. That I'm trying. Say. Hello. I, hey man, I'm trying to tell you, man. Right now, the family don't want you in the family right now. I don't give a about y'all. I ain't in love with y'all. I'm marrying Kristen, and I can give a if I see y'all ever again. Oh, now I'm gonna tell you this here. The family voted on one more thing. You need to go on. I don't know that while we at it. This ain't no damn democracy. We getting married. That is between her and I. And if y'all don't want to be there, jump off in the ditch. There's one more thing we done voted on. What, what the else you done voted on? We voted on this. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Christian's entire family got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> y'all some <laughs> Y'all some <laughs> I'm still <laughs> up when they come to the wedding. Nephew <laughs> uh, Tommy. <laughs> I don't put all that money out like that. I was like, no, sir. <laughs> I got one more thing I got to ask you, dog. What is, what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? <laughs> the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. <laughs> Tommy, I'm being real with you, man. Somebody going to f*** you up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shirley, in the words of Old Mill, how ready, baby? Uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it stupid. Uh, y'all ain't no. got to be, no, y'all ain't, ain't nobody needs y'all approval on nothing. You ain't we, said nothing to her we about this. so quickly. No. And we ain't told her nothing. <laughs> All right, guys, coming up, thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, uh, we'll have entertainment and national news with Miss Ann Tripp right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, so our forever first lady, Michelle Obama, revealed on her podcast that uh, she's dealing with a form of low-grade depression, and she says it's partly brought on by the current administration. Um, 
Can well, tell her that. That ain't depressed yeah. you? That is depressed all of us. Yeah. Tell her oh, that's all of us is yeah. with her. <laughs> we can understand that. Then you I'm suffering tell- from an episode of high, low-grade depression. <laughs> <laughs> high and low. Yeah, I'm sick of his ass for real. <laughs> the new episode of the Michelle Obama podcast aired yesterday, and Mrs. Obama talked about the nationwide civil unrest and Trump's response to it. She said it's all bringing her down. Let's listen to what she had to say. And spiritually, these are not fulfilling times, spiritually. So I, I know that I am dealing with uh, some form of low-grade depression, not just because of the quarantine, but because of the racial strife and just seeing this administration, watching the hypocrisy of it day in and day out is dispiriting. You know, I don't think I'm unusual in, in that, but I'd be remiss to say that part of this depression is also a result of what we're seeing in terms of the protests, the continued racial unrest that has plagued this country since its birth. I have to say that waking up to the news, waking up to how this administration has or has not responded, waking up to yet another story of a black man or a black person somehow being dehumanized or hurt or killed or falsely accused of something, it is exhausting. And and, and it, it has led to a weight that I haven't felt in my life in in a while. Wow. So true. I she think, speaks uh, for a lot of people. You know, when she said it's exhausting, I think that's mm-hmm. what a lot of us feel. It's just, mm-hmm. it's tiring. And that's why I, uh, I uh, applaud the young people out here who have not seen as much as some older people and are dealing with it mm-hmm. uh, yes. on everybody's behalf. Because like I said, I said it jokingly, but I really mean it though. Protest is a young person sport. And mm-hmm. it just really is, man. People talking about, man, well, Martin Luther King was old. Martin Luther King was 38 years old right. yes, sir. when he died. Yeah, when he passed, I mean, no, no, right. no, 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 when he was killed. Mm-hmm. He was yeah, 38 fascinated. years old. Mm-hmm. So he had been marching long before that. It really is a young, a young person sport. The advantage we have now is my generation has a lot of, a lot of experience with it and can share some of the nuances of it. But these young lions out here, they're, they're rowing the correct way. And mm-hmm. these basketball players and NFL players kneeling and not getting up and not going to let you change the narrative because you just want to say it's about the military and the right. flag. I think they're it's absolutely that. astonishing what they're doing. And I so appreciate the non-African Americans who have joined in on the fight to protest. And so, uh, yeah, what she's saying is it's exhausting. And that's why, like, I even heard Shaq on TNT say, man, I just appreciate all the young people out there. With, <laughs> you know, just, you know, I'm, 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 you know, for everything they're doing. And because yeah. older people know what it takes to be out there. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just very appreciative of their effort. I, I, I like too, their Steve, bravery, I- man. I like their bravery. They, they just yeah. not scared. They're not scared at all. Yeah. and They and go I- for it. You're, yeah, you're right. And, and I think it's very brave. I was going to say that it's very brave of the first lady of the United States, former first lady, to talk about low grade depression. You know, that deals with mental health and all of that. You know, that's very brave of her to talk about that. I'm sure she helped a lot. of. If you're an African-American, you have a form of that, man. It's exhausting to me. That's what it is. I mean, I'm just yeah. telling you the truth. <laughs> all right. Let's go to the news, Steve. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you. Talk about exhausting. Here we go. Several countries have come forward with offers of help for Lebanon in the wake of the massive explosion in Beirut early this week. That explosion killed at least 130 people and injured some 5,000 others. Lebanon's president says the blast was caused by ammonium nitrate that was unsafely stored. That was the reason. Michigan Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib easily won Tuesday's Democratic primary. Tlaib was the first Palestinian-American woman ever elected to the U.S. Congress. She defeated her opponent, Detroit City Council President Brenda Jones, by a wide margin, really, really easily, winning twice as many votes as she did the first time around. Uh, Rashida Tlaib gained national recognition, you may remember, by battling with President Trump with the other newly elected progressive women of color, including AOC, a group that uh, President Trump calls the squad. 
According to the Washington Post, Republican officials have been considering using the White House South Lawn to have Donald Trump accept the Republican Party's presidential nomination later this month. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tells MSNBC that the idea is unprecedented and outrageous. For the president of the United States to degrade once again the White House, as he has done over and over again, by saying he's going to completely politicize it, is something that uh, uh, should be rejected right out of hand. By the way, even some Republicans uh, wonder if it's legal, but Trump says that regular restrictions do not apply to him. You may remember that the GOP first wanted to hold its annual convention in North Carolina, and then it was switched to Florida, and then it was finally canceled, all over escalating coronavirus infections in those states. The federal appeals court in Washington, D.C. has agreed to rehear arguments in the case against Michael Flynn, President Trump's former national security advisor. Flynn held a position for only 22 days before he was forced out of it for lying to federal investigators looking into Russia's alleged election meddling. The court says it will hear oral arguments in the Flynn case on October 11th, excuse me, on August 11th. Attorney General William Barr tried to back away from prosecuting Flynn, if you may remember, even though Flynn pleaded guilty to lying to the feds not once but twice. And Flynn got a new lawyer, though, who's challenging the FBI's actions in this case. So, you know, stay tuned on that. And finally, General Charles Q. Brown, the first black man to command a military service, takes command today as chief of the Air Force. General Brown, as an F-16 pilot, recently commanded the U.S. Air Force in the Pacific. Back in June, after the police murder of General of, of both George Floyd, General Brown made an emotional video where he talked about what he had to go through as a black military officer. I'm thinking about my Air Force career, where I was often the only African-American in my squadron. I'm thinking about wearing the same flight suit with the same wings on my chest as my peers. And they mean question by another military member. Are you a pilot? Congrats to General Charles Brown, Chief of the Air Force. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so according to TMZ, Kim Kardashian West and Kanye West are working on their marriage. They're in a very remote, private location. They jumped on a private jet with their children, flew to a tropical island. They are staying in an estate that is basically a fortress. There's no way trespassers or the paparazzi can get close to them. Sources close to TMZ have reported that this will not be a short trip and it is a last-ditch effort to save their marriage. I'm glad they're working on their marriage. As you know, Kanye took to Twitter recently with a, just a barrage of just crazy, disrespectful tweets uh, about his marriage, about his mother-in-law. You know, not cool. We really hope that uh, this works out for them because, you know, I think you mentioned it yesterday, Steve. We hate to see people break up. I mean, seriously, we really do. Can I, can I, they have four children. Questions? What, Tommy? If you in a fortress, <laughs> why is a paparazzi looking for you? I mean, who is paying for these paparazzi? Where are they getting all these flight tickets to find out where you at? They stand outside and take a picture. Well, of it's the flight job. ticket. It's yeah. the money that they get for the picture. Pictures, yeah. They'll go to so the they, end. So they spend their own money to try to get yeah. that, that million yeah. dollar most, picture? Most paparazzis I... are freelance. Yeah, You see perfect. these guys with TMZ cameras? They're freelance. They get the TMZ label. They put it on their camera. They're freelance. Some of them cool dudes, though. Yeah, man. Some mm-hmm. of them is cool people. I, have, I usually have a good relationship with them. Some All of them right. really cool yeah. people. I and got thirty dollars for your picture, Tommy. <laughs> I know you better not put it out there. I know you better not put it out I there. I just turned it in. I need a game. <laughs> All right. So speaking of Kanye, according to Forbes.com, I'm waiting Kanye- to get that picture you buying them chicken wings. <laughs> you gonna turn it in up? That's the one I'm gonna sell. That Maddie right. said. <laughs> well, let me tell you guys about this. Kanye has chosen a running mate. Okay, he has chosen Michelle Tidball for VP of uh, of the United States on his birthday party. So he'll run for the president, and she'll be vice president. Michelle Tidball. Uh, I'm sure none of us have heard of her, but she's a self. Proclaimed biblical life coach. Michelle a is a self proclaimed what? Biblical life coach. Okay. She's a 57 year old white woman. She's from Cody, Wyoming. She runs an online Bible study. She I works in a dental office. And uh, so far, she said nothing publicly. We haven't uh, heard anything from her publicly about Kanye's campaign or the So he went to the party. dentist while he was in Wyoming and, uh, and <laughs> hooked up with her. How did this happen? <laughs> Good listen, question. He, ain't nobody he also, got time for this. We really don't, Steve. He also said that Jay-Z would be a good running mate. 
Jay not getting in this. Don't bring Jay Oakland. ain't in this. <laughs> Oh, Coming up God. at 34, we're going to move on now. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, Kevin Hart is in the news. He says he's sick of internet trolls. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Kevin Hart in the news. Uh, once again, he's expressing his frustration with social media trolls. In an Instagram video posted yesterday, he said, this social media sugar honey iced tea is getting out of hand. He came under fire and received a lot of negative comments when he defended Ellen DeGeneres recently. Uh, social media trolls also claimed that Kevin did not, did not offer that same support to Nick Cannon when he went through his recent public ordeal. Kevin cleared up the misconceptions and said he's a friend and will always be there for his friends, whether publicly or privately. He's saying he's praying for a better place, um, for a better understanding. People go through stuff, and as a friend, he's always there to support them and help them get through it. So people don't know all the time what's going on behind the scenes just because they don't do it publicly. Man. So, Man. so people are upset with Ellen as well? Here's the Steve? deal. I, look. I don't understand this story. I've, I've been on the Ellen show many times. I've talked mm-hmm. with her personally. I've been in business with her. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything that they're talking about. I've never seen it. Now, does that mean there are no problems? Of mm-hmm. course it doesn't. But Ellen DeGeneres, in no shape, form, or fashion, is a racist person. I could just flat out tell you that. Look, man, I've been black. The whole 63 years. You can't fool me with racism. Mm-hmm. Even undercover. No, no, no. Not, yeah. not even for a little show, bit. A lot of they you know, been in business together It's, it's together, not, it's not just that. Her. I've had many personal conversations with this woman. Mm-hmm. Ellen DeGeneres is not racist in any shape, form, or fashion. Now, ain't no need to come in after me because I'm making a true statement. Mm-hmm. Now, there may be some people barking about some producers on their show. And there could oh, be okay. something going on. Mm-hmm. But what they're trying to do is make it all about her. And I, I just... I, I because under, she's I the did, face of it. Mm-hmm. Of course. You know, she's mm-hmm. the star. It's not a right. story unless you put Ellen on it. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I, don't, I don't know exactly what Kevin Hart said. I'm just saying I, I've known this woman for a number of years. Mm-hmm. She is really one of the coolest people in show business. I, I've seen no shape, form, or fashion of it. On her show, I haven't seen it. Does mm-hmm. it mean that it doesn't that it doesn't exist? Of course not. You could have a problem person working for you and you not be aware of it. Mm-hmm. That's so mm-hmm. many stuff that happens <laughs> hey, underneath uh, how you. How many times you've had that up? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh, and do you know how many people I've had to release oh, that wow. get out my life, man? Mm-hmm. You and know, not, uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say it's not so much that he was defending Ellen. It's the fact that they see him defending Ellen, but they don't think he came to Nick Cannon's defense when Nick was going through what he went through. You know. Um, Wait a minute, y'all. Hold up. Let's say. Let, let me say so. Cause a person is black, don't mean you have a relationship with them. With every do. black person. That's, that's yeah. No, yeah. you don't. You know. Yeah. You can make a general statement about Ellen without having a personal relationship. Mm-hmm. You can make a general statement about Nick without having a personal relationship. Nick Cannon's a cool guy. And Kevin and Nick do have a relationship. I mean, you know. You know. Oh, yeah. And they once they start that wagon swinging, man, I, it's, it's so hard to believe how many people jump on board that thing, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I, you know, I, I think Nick is a great guy, man. I don't think Nick really intended it the way it came out. But it just came out badly for the guy. You know, he's going to work through it. You know, he said what he do. You know, but now you got to get to that point where it starts starts, starts working itself through. Somebody sent me a text one time, and I screenshot. Oh, yeah. I keep it in my motivation. Mm-hmm. What does it say? It says, don't worry about the people God removed from your life. He heard conversations you didn't, saw things you couldn't, and made moves you wouldn't. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. I think we need to hear that one more time. Don't worry about the people God removed from your life. He heard conversations you didn't, saw things you couldn't, and made moves you wouldn't. Mm. Wow. That's what I, I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Man, I'm sorry. Right. So I understand that. That's a pearl. Clearly. I get that was every a pearl last right point. There. Uh, Boy, that all was a three pearl. of them. <laughs> <laughs>
uh-huh. may move you wouldn't. Yes, okay. yes. Cool. That's what but he, he heard what you did not hear. Man. That's what he does. Y'all been talking about me. <laughs> All right, coming up next, nephew with the prank phone call of the day right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, I thought I was dating him, not his mama. I thought I was dating him, not his mama. That is the subject. uh, (laughs) We'll get into that in a bit. But right now, it is time for the nephew in today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? My bones is weak. I'm going to say it again. My bones is weak. That's what it is. Are we? But okay. No, 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 no. My <laughs> bones is weak. Mm-hmm. You got it? Weak. 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 Yeah. Weak. My bones, bones is weak. That's what it is. Well, well, you can't hardly walk if your bones have got a lot of wheat in it. <laughs> yeah. You a scarecrow. <laughs> Shut up. Let's go, cat dog. My bones is weak. Come on. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to speak to Ron. Yeah, this is Ron. Hey, Ron, how you doing? It's Foley, man. How are you, brother? I'm good, Foley. Hey, hey, I, I, I want to congratulate you, man, on the uh, on the baby, man. I wasn't able to make it to the baby shower, man, but I want to congratulate you on the baby, man, and and, and all of that, man. Uh, much success to you, man. Uh, you, you and your wife. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate that, Foley. Yeah, well, yeah, Foley, Foley man. Uh, I, I didn't get you know my uh, my wife Danita. She came to the uh, to the to the baby shower, man. So you know, uh, uh, she was telling me how how, how how nice it was, how successful it was, man. So I just you want you know uh, wanted to give you big ups. I heard the baby came and everything, and I wanted to just yeah, call a, little, a little girl, a little girl. Y'all had a little girl? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, congratulations, man. Congratulations, Ron. I, I wanted to definitely uh, call and congratulate, man. And well, um, real quick, what um what baby shower was your wife at? Because we had two. We had one for my side of the family. And then one for my wife's side, because, you know, they live different places and stuff, man. So which one do you think she was at? Uh, probably on your wife's side, you know. Okay, okay. She knows my wife? Well, no, see, see, Danita is actually friends with um, with Kendra. Now, you know Kendra, right? Oh, yeah, I know Kendra. Yeah, we, yeah, that's good friend of mine. Okay, she was, she was with Kendra. Okay, yeah, she comes, they play cards, you know. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, she, she was with Kendra, man, and... Um, she was just telling me how successful, man, how nice it was, and, and you know, laid out baby shower. I, I wasn't able to make it, man. I've been a little under the weather, bro. Uh, you know, right. and, uh, you know, with, with God's help, man, I'll be able to get back on my feet. You know what I'm saying? That's all right. So, hey, man, I, I, I just, you know, congratulations again, man. You know, uh, the beautiful baby girl. I, I, Man, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, man, but uh, I just, I can't fully. I'm trying to remember you and trying to place you and, I just I can't do it. <laughs> Have we met? No, 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 no. My bad, man. I'm sorry, dog. Now nah, me and you, we haven't we haven't met at all. Um, like I say, uh, you know, my wife knows Kendra. They hang out, and uh, yeah. I guess she's she's dabbled a couple times and been around. You know, your wife is uh, your wife is Marilyn, right? Yeah, that's my wife. Okay, yeah, I guess she's been uh, been in in the presence of Marilyn, man. So you know. Uh, you know, I, I kind of got your number from uh, from my wife, man, uh, and she got it from Kendra, so I, I kind of wanted to holler at you, you know? Uh, what you want to holler at me about? Actually, man, like I say, man, you... I've been I've been down for a minute, you know, and uh, I, I uh, a- actually, you know, came from the doctor yesterday, and, and my, <sighs> my bones, man, they, my bones are deteriorating, you know? That's kind of what I what I've been going through, man. Um, okay. And if if I don't uh, get the proper uh, medication that I need, man, then we, you know, it, it, it within the next three months here, dog, it it, wow. it 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 could get pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? Well, man, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Um, yeah, it, it, you it, know, it, all I can do is just pray well, for you, man, and you know. Uh, well, man, I the. the the doctor told me don't, that if don't I don't cry, bro. Don't cry, man. The, the, the doctor told me, man, that you know, if, if I get the right medication, man, that you know, I could get back up to seventy-five, eighty percent healthy again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's just a, a rare uh, 
type of thing that I need to try and get. Okay. And um, I, 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 I think that you might be. I think you can help me. Yo, yeah, be strong, name. man. Be strong. Just, man, sit down, man. <laughs> be strong, bro. It's, it's going to be all right, but man. I think it's you... going to be all right. God is with you. I'll, I'll pray for you. I'll do all I can. I, I don't know. Well, well, well actually, actually, uh, the, the doctor told me, man, that if, for, if I, for six months, if I drunk breast milk, it will it will it will put enough calcium and and stuff back into my bones that would get me back up to seventy to eighty five percent healthy. Breast milk? Yeah. I ain't got no breast, bro. So you know, well, uh, it's, it's not it's, it's not you, Ron. You you don't you know, but you know your your wife does though. Whoa! You talking about my wife's breast, man? I, I'm not, I'm not, not directly, man. I'm just saying that she can, you know. I mean, if if I had her breast milk for like six months straight, man, I could get back whole again, man. Oh, the f- up! You don't talk about a man's wife or her breast milk. I just had a, I just had a f- baby, man. Are you serious? I'm just, I'm just all I'm so trying. You asking for my wife's breast milk, man? Man, I'm just asking y'all to share it for six we months. We can't share no. F- Breast milk with you, man. You got the wrong one, man. The wrong one. So you said your name was what? My name's Foley, Foley man. Some... This is wrong, man. This is wrong. Okay. Wrong. No, no, we're just talking about six months of breast milk, man. Six months My of breast milk. My wife's breast milk. We ain't talking about just no breast milk. And I understand. My wife's breast milk, man. I understand that, man. But we're talking about you saving a life, man. A life. I ain't the one. Okay, well, let me ask you this. What if y'all would have had twins, man? Y'all would have been breastfeeding two babies. Just look what? at it as if we twins. What the f***? Man, I'm getting the f*** off this phone because I don't know who the f*** you are. You need to chill the f*** out, man. You need to go get on your knees, pray that your bones get healed or whatever the f- You got the wrong f- number, man. Listen, man, all I'm saying is I got one more thing I want to say, nah, look, and then man, I'll let you go, know, right? I'm about to get, off the, phone, right? phone, I just I'm want to get off the phone, call Kendra, and find out why the gave you my number because that's how you got it. Can I say one more thing? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I say it? Say it, man. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Kendra and your wife, Marilyn, got me to prank phone call you. (laughs) Hello, Ron. Yeah, man. Ooh, y'all are good, man. Whoa, man, my wife, man. Kendrick, boy. Did I get you, man? Yeah, y'all got me, man. Y'all got me. <laughs> I, hey, I got them, too. They done started something. <laughs> hey, one more thing. What's the baddest radio station in the land, man? Man, it is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> man, wow, man. <laughs> we all got to try to yeah. save somebody sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to. Yeah, man, I'm going I'm to pray for you, man. You know, yeah, God. so compelling. Yeah. Steve, right? Man. Man. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man, don't cry, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> be, man, be strong. Man. Be strong. <laughs> Falling right. apart for in front of me, man. I, ain't, I, don't, I don't even know you, Foley. <laughs> no. Hey, man, I ain't got no breath. <laughs> yeah. well, right. Yes, yes, I, yes, Junior. <laughs> yeah, but your wife do. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold up, man. What? We'll talk what? About my hold up. <laughs> But what if y'all right. had twins, though? I mean, yeah. I said, Just look at it like that. You don't talk about a man's wife or her breast. What are you man, doing, you know, Foley? You know. Man, we just had this baby. Right. About to share no milk with you. Oh, oh, oh man. Uh, oh, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, man, Tommy. lead-in was everything, oh, man. Oh, oh, I know. I mean, man, we it had, took we, so long. Dog, I was getting levels. aggravated. I was getting mm-hmm. aggravated by the lead. I was going, man, what is you calling this man for? <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? I was at the shower. Well, I wasn't there, but yeah. congratulations. Where was you at? <laughs> we had two at one for my family and one for her. <laughs> All right. That's that Tommy. real black man. He going to tell you, I don't really know you, dog. Yeah. Holy, really, I can't, I can't put it together. All right, nephew, you are the king of pranks. That was a good one. Uh, Coming up next, it's my strawberry letter subject. I thought I was dating him, not his mama. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, this is a great place to do this, Steve. Before today's letter, the strawberry letter, uh, I thought I was dating him, not his mama. We're going to get to that. We need to encourage our listeners, our Steve Harvey Nation, especially our Tennessee voters, to get to the polls today, okay? If you are not registered or if you have any questions about the November 3rd election, go to whenweallvote.org. We have now 89 days, 89 days left Uh until... November 3rd. It's going fast, isn't it? Mm. All right. General election is November 3rd, so get to the going polls. Down. Yes, we, the poll. <laughs> we want to encourage you, all right? Uh, and it is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. If you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and just click Submit Strawberry Letter, okay? We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, Strawberry Letter. All right, thank you, nephew. Subject, I thought I was dating him, not his mama. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am a 29-year-old woman, and I was in a relationship with a 31-year-old man. We both have degrees and promising careers. He came from a solid middle-class family, and I was raised by a single mother with very humble beginnings. We have been dating for two years, and my boyfriend's mother does not like me. He told his mom he always tried to hook him up. Uh, He told me that his mom had always tried to hook him up with successful women in town, but he was never interested. Uh, I tried to overlook her, and I was pleasant whenever I was around her. I can tell when she's saying nasty things about me on the phone because my boyfriend has a nervous laugh, and then he would rush her off the phone. He recently moved back home with his parents to save money to buy a house, so I have to visit him there. He has asked me to make myself comfortable when I'm there, but it's hard. His mom has said to me, it's not your fault you were not exposed to certain things growing up. And she has called me ghetto a few times and tried to laugh it off. But the most hurtful thing was a text exchange my boyfriend had with his mom. She texted him that he could do better and be with a classy woman. He responded to her and said that she didn't need to worry because I'd only be around for a season, not a lifetime. I told him I checked his messages and I broke up with him. He said he didn't mean it. He only said that to end the conversation with his mom. He made his mom call me to apologize and um, I, I ended up basically cursing her out. Uh, my boyfriend said there's no way we could ever be together since I did that. I don't see anything wrong with standing up for myself after all the stuff his mama has done to me. Has she won in the end? Well, sis, uh, I I cannot go with you on this one because you did say you cursed his mom out, right? Well, you, you can't do that. Um, I I know she's disrespectful. I know all of that. The fact that you didn't see anything wrong with it is really a problem. And he's not going to forgive you for that. Um, And and I'm all for you standing up for yourself. Don't get me wrong. But I I just think you went too far with the cursing out of the mom. I, I know. I know. Like I said, she's disrespectful to you. She's completely out of line calling you names, ghetto and all that kind of stuff. But that is his mom. He's supposed to check her when it comes to you. You should direct your anger to him, not her. But then again, he's obviously a mama's boy, right? And he's not going to do it. That's why you need to leave him just right where he is. After two years, haven't you had enough of her and him? After two years, he doesn't defend you. Uh, And when you do stand up for yourself, then, you know, he can't see a future for you guys. And and, all, and let me tell you this. I, I think you have been standing up for yourself quite well. Uh, you've been doing it forever. So what? He was raised in a nice middle class family. That's great. You know, lucky him. But I say to you, take your eyes off them and just look at your accomplishments for a second. You said that you came from humble beginnings and a single mom. And look at what you've accomplished. You finished college. You have a promising career, you said. I, I say again, you've done quite well for for yourself. They should be congratulating you. She should be welcoming you to the family, happy that you're dating her son. Uh, they shouldn't be hating on you. They they definitely have this situation twisted. And, you know, you may as well know it now. You see it, don't you? Mama's boy is not going to be able to get past you cussing out his mom. So, I mean, I, 
I, I don't see a future here because he's not going to stand up to his mom. And, and that's what you're going to have to need if you want to, um, you know, go any further in this relationship with mama's boy. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Steve? Good riddance. That's what you should be saying to mm-hmm. yourself right now. <laughs> You found out just in the nick of time what you were dealing with. Both of you all got degrees, promising careers. He came from a solid middle middle ground. You had humble beginnings. We've been dating two years. Your boyfriend mother don't like you. (laughs) She's always tried to hook him up with successful women, but he was not interested. You always tried to overlook her. You were pleasant whenever you're around her. She talked nasty about you. He recently hit a part right here. This is where the letter turns for me. He recently moved back home with his parents to save money to buy a house. That rarely happens. Because he moved back home, you're saying? At 31. Okay. Mm -hmm. To save money to buy a house. People buy houses without moving back home all the time. So I don't, I don't get this part, man. That part right there sounds real shaky to me. And when we come back, I'm going to agree with Shirley 100%. This is a mama's boy. Oh, this is a mama's boy, man. Run now, girl, because he not fitting to stop being a mama's uh-uh. boy. He done, he done already moved back home at 31. Right. How, how much more of a boy can you be? All right, Steve, hang on right there. We'll have part two of your response coming up to today's Strawberry Letter at 23 minutes after the hour. The title, I Thought I Was Dating Him, Not His Mama. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. Uh, Subject, I thought I was dating him, not his mama. Well, you thought wrong. You're dating his mama. He's a mama's (laughs) boy. Right. Both of y'all got degrees. He middle class. You grew up humble. He had a whole problem. His mama don't like you. Think she, he, she thinks he could have did better. She don't think you it. You've tried to be nice to her. You overlook all the stuff. She talked to you real nasty. Now, your boyfriend recently moved back home with his parents to save money to buy a house. Now, look, people move back home to save money. I got that. Not 31-year-old mm-hmm. men. Right. 31 year old men don't go back home. I just don't, man, unless you just out on luck. No, he going back to save money. This is a mama's boy, man. I'm sorry. You know, and then uh, he asks you to make yourself comfortable when you're over there. You're in somebody else's house, but it's hard. His mom said to you, it's not your fault you were not exposed to certain things growing up. She didn't call you ghetto a few times, tried to laugh hmm. at all. But the hurtful thing for you was a text exchange you saw between him and his mama. She texted him that he could do better and be with a classy woman. He responded to her and said that she didn't need to worry because you'd only be around for a season, not a lifetime. Then you told the dude you checked his message and I broke up with him. He said he ain't mean it. He only said that at the end of the conversation with his mom. Wait a minute, hold up. Wow. If you want to end the conversation with your mom, you hang up the phone. Just hang down. Hey, mom, yeah. mom, I got to go now. You ain't got to text that back. He mm-hmm. texted that because he meant it. Now, did he have his mama call you to apologize? Yeah, but you knew it was a weak apology, so you cussed her out. Mm. Now, I agree with Shirley. That's the mistake you made. You See, see, see you got to stay on the high side, sister. But this was a great learning experience because this... A traumatic moment exposed a couple of flaws in the relationship. Because after you cussed his mama out, but he wants you to forgive him for saying she only she only for a season. She ain't gonna be with me for a lifetime. He wants you to forgive that, but he ain't gonna forgive you cussing his mama out. Right. My boyfriend said there was no way we could ever be together since I did that. I don't see anything wrong with standing up for myself. That's the ghetto way. You better believe that, girl. That's the ghetto way. <laughs> Hold on to that, because that's going to come in handy a few more times in your life. Stand up for yourself. But there's other ways of standing up for yourself. Right. She's an old, bitter chick. Just let her ride it out. You 29, fine. Now, he ain't got you no more. But he didn't just took his mama's side. There's no way we could be together after this. 
I say good riddance. You discover he's a mama's boy. What you want to do? You got to go over to even date him. Now, now, how does this work now? How do you go back over there with him? He's still at his mama's damn house. You done cussed her out. How comfortable you finna get over there now? Right. <laughs> you couldn't get comfortable at first. Now you done cussed her ass out? And she says she didn't feel bad. <laughs> no, this relationship is over. It is. It's done. But it was over with before you cussed her out. Mm-hmm. It was over with when he said, you only going to be around for a season, not a lifetime. It was over then. After two years, he said that. You didn't even have to cuss his mama out. You should have cussed him out. Yeah. And went on about your business. But this is good riddance. This can never work. Mm -hmm. His mother will always bring it up. She'll forever be nasty. Mm -hmm. He's going to forever be a mama's boy. And he's going to be in that house for a long time. Because I don't know how long it takes to save up for a house at 31. But it take a while. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. It take a while. So he going to be at the house. And you dating a dude that's 31 that live with his mom and daddy. What? Girl, you could do way better than that by yourself. Yeah, and they're I putting her down her. and making her feel badly because of the way she was brought up and all of that. That's not cool. Hey, I was brought up poor. Yeah. I mean, all of us. Single mom. I have a yeah. single mom raised me. Come on. You, you've done quite well for yourself. Quite well. You should have just cussed him out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's where your anger is. But I guess, you know, up. you said mama might as well get some, too, with this <laughs> fake-ass apology. <laughs> right. Well, I didn't really mean it like that. I was saying you ghetto just because you live over there on Martin Luther King. That's the only reason I said that. <laughs> and, you know, you know, the fact that you tries to come over and sometimes and you don't know things, we was going to work with you. We was going to try to put you in and, you know, cultivate you. <laughs> cultivate you. But, you know, you just, you know, you was just so far deep in the hood, it almost mm-hmm. wasn't no saving you. But I'm sorry I said you was Ooh. ghetto. But did I lie? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. that's a weak apology oh, right there. Oh, <laughs> she lit her drawers yeah. on fire yeah. and went at that old hag. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say good riddance, sister. Congratulations, you know. Mm-hmm. Move on. But you can't, you'll never be able to make this relationship work because to see him, you got to go over there. Yeah. And he and his mama's out. You just cussed her out. Yeah. Well, here come yeah. the cussle. <laughs> well, look who here. Yes, yeah, I guess she told Little me. Little Miss she? Ghetto, I oh. guess you told me. <laughs> She'll never live it down, ever. No. All right, uh, listen. <laughs> If you have comments on today's Strawberry Letter, please post them, okay, on Instagram or Facebook at Steve Harvey FM, and then check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up in about 10 minutes at 46 minutes after the hour, it will be our girl, Cheryl Underwood, from The Talk, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is time. Go ahead, introduce our girl, Steve. Cheryl Underwood. Thank you, Steve Harvey. I've been waiting for an entire week for this to happen. I've been what you been up. waiting a what week you? for? It's because it's time for uh, Ready for Love, Steve Harvey Morning Show Edition. <laughs> yeah, because we got the host. Okay, because Tommy is the host, and this is me and Junior's uh, introductory uh, interview that we should be on the show together. A- okay, am now I right, let Jim? me say this before you what? start. What? I'm only doing this because Tommy is the host. I do not really think you and Junior are going to make it. Who the hell is that talking? Was that you, Junior? Yeah, I, I don't see Well, let's it. let's see if there's some compatibility. There there you go. Go. Thank you. Thank you, there Tommy, you. my man. Okay. Hey, hey, a lot of time. Yeah. I don't no, think it no. worked, but you know, maybe Junior knows something I don't know. Go ahead, Tommy. Yeah. Tommy. Tommy okay. might know. Okay. okay, come on, Tommy. All right, Cheryl, what what are the hobbies that you have? What are the things that you like to do? What's in the past time? When you're not at work, what is it that yeah. you like to do? I like to um, f- figure out ways to make money and stay uh-huh. my myself and plan ways to jump Junior's fence to find out where he is. Three things. Good answer. Uh, good answer. Oh, yes. wrong TV show. Sorry. And my so wife you with stalk Christ. a little bit. Let's be honest. You stalk a little bit. No, that's called surveillance. Uh, <laughs> 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 Listen to me, stalking 
is a federal crime surveillance. <laughs> <laughs> very detailed, structured, intellectual endeavor. You have to plan. You have to plan. Good one, Cheryl. Good one. Good one, Cheryl. Well, Cheryl, let me ask you this. What what is a per what do you see a perfect date being with you and Junior? What is a perfect date? Oh, we already had it. We was in first class together, flying the sand and soul. Remember that? <laughs> Junior. Oh, we had a good time. Mm. Man, listen. We had drank so much that, liquor that first was, class. That was a that was a date, Cheryl. I yeah, that was going a, to sand and soul. Yeah. Well, I'm, okay, this is what made it mm. a date. They had already closed the cabin this. door. They had already closed the cabin door. And remember, mm. uh uh wasn't Monica and them sitting in the fourth row, Shirley, Monica, y'all was sitting uh -huh. in the fourth row. Me yeah. and Junior were sitting in the front so we could stretch out. And then when we had enough drinks and nodded off to sleep, both of us raised our shirts up because it was hot to, to get <laughs> the stomach air happen. <laughs> That's when Cheryl. I knew we was meant to be together. Wait, wait. I knew we was both meant to be together. Both y'all let y'all stomach side together. Sweat for Lord. Sweat for Cheryl, is that sexy? Really? Hand. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we turned that little knob up, Shirley, where the air blow out in, in the cabin. And both of us had our your stomach. Listen to me, both of <laughs> us. I said this love. Both oh. of us with an F. Both of us. Oh my God. We need one more segment. Come on, Tommy. Ask something else. Ask something else. Okay. Well, when we come okay. back, I got yeah. more. I, I okay, think, good. Yeah. Good. Because this is going to happen, Junior. I am ready for love, and you are too. All right. We'll be back. You heard it at the top of the hour <laughs> with more Ready to Love right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, we're back with part two of Ready to Love. Our host, nephew Tommy, and He's our horrible. contestants, uh, Cheryl Underwood and yes. Junior. Let's go. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. so, uh, you know, we left off. You gave me the perfect date for you uh -huh. guys. Yes. Now, give me the per perfect intimate setting for when you want the, the you know, for, for that magical moment to happen. Give me that. Well, Tommy, first, you know, <laughs> we must uh, be married to each other because I'm not going to get caught slipping. On my oh. road with Christ. Oh, no, I can't. Oh. Uh, now, I'm Cheryl, too old. Cheryl, huh? y'all a long way from that. What? From Christ. Y'all a long yeah, Christ way from long marriage. Listen, hold on. Yeah. See, you got you to stay focused. You got to have a plan. You got to first Christian counseling, and then, Junior, sure. what church you go to? <laughs> I'm, I'm quarantined. I can't go Baptist. That, that's right. Bedside Baptist sermon on the couch. Uh -huh. That's it. Mount okay. Pillow. That's it. That's it. Uh, hey, Mount me and Pillow. Joe Osteen right on TV together. So that means that our walk is strong. We want to be evenly yoked. And I think that we are going all the way to matrimony. Because I'm not giving up no ass. If, sorry. I'm not giving up. Oh. Uh, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl. What? Oh, what? My goodness. That slipped out. I apologize to all the saints listen to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. But I'm not trying to get caught slipping out here. My love for Junior is agape love. It's till the end of time. Oh, conditional love. Agape love. You know, listen, man, I hate it's when people use that word, agape love. Yeah. <laughs> they use it a lot, too. Yeah. I mean, okay, I mean, then. What the hell is that? That's the kind of love that me and Junior going to have till death do us part. Because yeah. if he mm. try to leave me, I swear for the Lord, I'm going to kill him. Swear oh. to God. Oh, sorry. Did that come out? Yeah. Sorry. Yes, it did. Is so that much for agape. Yeah. 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 That went out the but window. Let me, let me ask this, Cheryl. What, yes. what have you done? What are you going to do in this relationship that yes. is gonna be, that's kind of different than your past relationship? Well, me and Junior will be getting married on the finale. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that'll what? bring those ratings uh, in. It sure will yeah. for people to see that. I bet they'd be, they be exchanging more bets than they do in March Madness. But here's what I'm going to do differently that, okay. that I've never done before. First mm. of all, we're going to live in two separate locations. Oh. Because I believe Junior deserves his privacy. And a man cave of a room is not going to be enough for Junior. He mm -hmm. needs a cathedral of privacy. So I think that if we live separately and I let him be the man in our relationship and I understand my place in the relationship. Well, wait a minute, what other role was it for me? <laughs> you was going to be the little sick boy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Steve, Steve, that I was nursing. three roles available, the man, the woman, back to help. and the little sick boy. I was going to nurse him back to help. Oh, I was going to sure. feed him little stuff and, so and, and rock him in a rocking chair. And, but <laughs> listen, this is what I think Junior deserves in a woman. Someone mm -hmm. who respects him as a man. 
someone who's sexually compatible with him, someone who has an affliction herself. So mm. we'll be taking our uh-uh. medication together. So y'all uh-uh. both got afflictions. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. If you don't take no, blood pressure that's medicine, not good. you can't Too be sick with ass that- people. Yeah, no. Okay. That's not going to work. Now, somebody got to be healthier so they can take care of them. <laughs> hey, can't hey, be, hey. Can't be both of y'all hey, sitting up in the that, bed ooh. talking about pass me them pills. But nobody asked healthy. Junior what he looking for. Mm-hmm. Ask Junior, okay, what okay. is he looking Junior, for? Junior, Junior, I'm, I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. First of all, he's looking for a home that's extremely close to a crisis center. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm right across right across from the grocery store. That's good enough. Let's go. <laughs> you know how they have urgent care centers? Yeah. 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 Uh, I need to be right there. <laughs> oh. Hey. Junior, what are you looking for in a good relationship? What, what, what are you looking for? You've had a couple of relationships. What are you looking uh, for now? N- not calling as much. That's me right there. You ain't gonna hear from me. You ain't gonna you hear don't from want, me. You don't want a relationship with strong communication. I'm sorry, guys. We have to leave it right there. Julie, you want to be left alone. Hey, did I not say that, Tommy? Did I what not did say call separate house, for? left alone? Don't Shirley, holler me, at me. Let me hear this, Shirley. We're out of time. I'm Thomas Miles. That's been Ready to Love right here with Nephew Tommy. We are we'll ready to love more. long distance. <laughs> the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Junior, with sports talk. Hey, let's go. Uh, what you got? <laughs> Listen, have y'all heard about what happened to the Orlando Magic, uh, Jonathan Isaac? Now, Jonathan, no. oh, yeah, Jonathan is a forward for the Orlando Magic, and in a mm-hmm. Sunday night's game, he was the only player that stood for the national anthem. Right. Now, while all his teammates knelt, he is the first player to stand during the anthem since the NBA's return. So guess what happened to him in the fourth quarter? It was that he was driving to the hoop, going to the exactly. left, mm-hmm. and his leg gave out on a jump stop in the lane, and he went down. He rolled off the court in a wheelchair and has a torn ACL. Mm-hmm. Some people think it's karma. What y'all think? <laughs> well, why um, didn't he kneel, though? What's, what's his it, reasoning for it? Ah, he said he wasn't kneeling. He, had he no. don't believe in it. He, he didn't say he wasn't going to kneel. <laughs> He's sitting nine. <laughs> he ain't kneeling. Yeah. He ain't, no. He ain't playing. But uh, every in every NBA player is kneeling except him. Yeah, yeah. They all kneel, mm-hmm. but except him. He's the only one to stand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it return. was sad. I, I, I feel bad. Maybe he doesn't. On him like that. Well, I don't. I don't do the karma thing when it comes to injuries. But yeah, like that. I mean, I. I don't, I don't know why he would that. not kneel. It doesn't make any sense. That's why people are saying it was karma. That he had an accident, Surely. you know. I don't know why he didn't kneel, but when 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 one black person take off, don't all black people take off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So much. Every black As the kneel, general rule, kneel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Coming up, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 33 minutes after the hour. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, so our forever first lady, Michelle Obama. Revealed on her podcast that uh, she's dealing with a form of low-grade depression, and she says it's partly brought on by the current administration. Um, Well, tell her that. That ain't depressed you? That is depressed all of us. Tell her that's all of us is with her. (laughs) We can understand that. I'm suffering from an episode of high-low-grade depression. (laughs) (laughs) High and low? Yeah, I'm sick of his ass for real. (laughs) The new episode of the Michelle Obama podcast aired yesterday, and Mrs. Obama talked about the nationwide civil unrest and Trump's response to it. She said it's all bringing her down. Let's listen to what she had to say. And spiritually, these are not fulfilling times, spiritually. So I I know that I am dealing with uh, some form of low-grade depression, not just because of the quarantine, but because of the racial strife and just seeing this administration, watching the hypocrisy of it day in and day out is dispiriting. You know, I don't think I'm unusual in, in that, but I'd be remiss to say that part of this depression is also a result of what we're seeing in terms of the protests, the continued racial unrest that has plagued this country since its birth. I have to say that waking up to the news 
waking up to how this administration has or has not responded, waking up to yet another story of a black man or a black person somehow being dehumanized or hurt or killed or falsely accused of something. It is exhausting and 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 it it has led to a weight that I haven't felt in my life in in a while. Wow. Oh true. I she think, speaks uh, for a lot of people. You know, when she said it's exhausting, I think that's mm-hmm. what a lot of us feel. It's just mm-hmm. it's tiring. And that's why I, uh, I uh, applaud the young people out here who have not seen as much as some older people and are dealing with it on everybody's behalf. Because like I said, I said it jokingly, but I really mean it, though. People talking about, man, well, Martin Luther King was old. Martin Luther King was 38 years old. Right. Yes, when he died, yeah. when he I mean, passed, no, no, right. no, 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 no. When he was killed, mm-hmm. he was yeah, 38 fascinated. years old. Mm-hmm. So he had been marching long before that. It really is a young, a young person sport. The advantage we have now is my generation has a lot of a lot of experience with it and can share some of the nuances of it. But these young lions out here, they're they're rowing the correct way. All right, coming up, it is our last break of the day. It's the last break of the day. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And we have some voting information for you, and Steve Harvey will give us his closing remarks. That's all coming up at 49 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Tennessee, the state of Tennessee, today is your statewide primary election. We want you to get out and vote today, please. If you have not registered and all of that, please go to whenweallvote.org. Come on, Tennessee. uh, Yes, Tennessee. Tennessee. We are still in a pandemic, people. Don't forget that. The U.S. is reporting close to 5 million cases and over 157,000 deaths. Please, when you go out, wear your mask, practice social distancing, wash your hands. Ooh. Please, 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 and vote. Those. That's can what I, we have to I do you those, for the remainder of this that, year. What, Tommy? I had that mask on and climbed a flight of stairs. Ooh. Were you winded? What? <laughs> hey, you know what, Tommy? Now that Man. you bring that up, what they have to do is with these masks mm-hmm. is they're going to have to start customizing some of these masks. Simulation. For example, if you're, if you're a heavy breather. Mm-hmm. Right. We have some of those on the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need a mask that's not so thin. Because I saw this dude inhale. Stop it, Tommy. And uh-huh. he sucked so much cotton down his throat. Oh, my God. Because that mask was just, he just sucked too much. Uh-huh. They need a sturdier mask. Uh-huh. People like myself who have large lips, we need another kind of mask. Oh, yeah. We need a yeah. mask that accommodates that. Mm-hmm. Large mm-hmm. lip people. White people mm-hmm. who have noses that stick way out in front of their mouth. Mm-hmm. They need a mask that's more contoured to the way they look. See, mm-hmm. my nose, if I turn sideways, my nose and lips is even. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to say. I need no. a mask. So, so wait a minute. We need white folk masks. We need a big lip mask. Keep going. What yeah. else? We, and we need a... Yeah. <laughs> Sniffing bacon. I cannot. You know, like you. ham-flavored mask. Right? <laughs> yeah. Ham-flavored oh, mask. Keep it on. I love it. Then you need, like, a mask for real skinny people, too, because some of the masks be just falling off of them. <laughs> you need a real skinny people mask. Okay. Then, you know. Does that mean, like, just a tighter band or, or even the mask itself? I wanted to just go with cotton stuffed in my nose. I thought that was going to help, but I have to cover my mouth, too. Yes, you have to cover so your like, mouth. I was thinking That's of cotton in thing. my nostrils and a tube sock in my mouth. <laughs> No, that's not going to work. <laughs> hey, man, can I ask you a real question? You ever walked up a flight of steps with your mask on, and when you get to the top, you ain't give a damn who was up there. You just took it, took it off. Dog, no, you don't care. Man, yeah, man. You don't care. You be hot in there. Yeah, hey, y'all, listen to me. On, on a serious note, mm-hmm. uh, we are in the 80s now with days left to this yeah, election. Yeah, 89 today, Steve. 89 yeah. days. Mm-hmm. And you all, this is serious. I'm actually a- asking you as sincere as I can to get real serious about this election. 
we have to send a message to this administration that we are no longer willing to tolerate this type of behavior. I mean, I've had four years of watching him tweet, watch, listen to him insult people, listen to him do thing after thing after thing that was unpresidential. Watch him go after all, all his causes have people of color attached to him. I've watched him make false statement after false statement after false statement. I've, I've seen this show enough. This is not funny. This is not fun to watch. It's not, it's not entertaining. I mean, I've never watched the news as I much as much as I have over the last three years. Because even when I come in from work, I just go, man, what did he do today? Well, I'm tired of the show. I'm tired of what did he do today. And I'm tired of acting like he doesn't shock me anymore, that this is the new norm. No, man, it's not the norm. It's not. And we need a president in the office that at least, at least knows how to act presidential. Just give me that, man. I'm tired of the reality star at the head of this country making comment after comment. I'm tired of him pardoning his friends. I've never seen more people commit crimes than he letting off the hook in my life, man. Ain't one of them people black. Not a one. And if they were, would they get pardoned? And number two, would they be his friends? And the answer to both of them is no. No, man, I'm tired of this, man. I'm tired of the divisiveness. Y'all, we got to do something about this. And in November, in 89 days, we have the opportunity to do something about it. But we have got to vote, people. I am begging you. Uncle Steve is begging you. We have got to vote. We have got to take what these young people do and put some muscle behind it. We have got to show up at the polls. We have got to register every college student. Everybody that's 18 should be registered. Everybody that's going to be 18 in the next 30, 40, 60 days, you can register to vote. We have got to get busy, man. I can't take four more years of this guy. I can't. It's not good for us, man. He's going to pass policy if he get in that's going to be utterly detrimental to us. You know, I was listening to Michelle Obama. She was talking about she's having some type of low-level depression because of the Trump administration. What's going on? All of us are. We have a chance to do something about it. WhenWeAllVote.org WhenWeAllVote.org Go today if you're not registered. Have somebody you know who's not registered. Go and register today. It will tell you when you can early vote, when you can mail in vote, if you can absentee vote, But what it's going to tell you to do is we have to vote. We can push this Black Lives Matter movement across the finish line. If black people, people of color, vote, we can change the direction of this nation if we all vote. When we all vote, dot. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 